So if you've done any calculus, you definitely know this result. This is like the first result that you learn. But we don't really learn how to prove it or understand how to prove it. It's a really easy proof, to be honest. So I thought I'd just make a quick video showing how to show that this is true. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to use first principles. Okay, if you're doing any kind of differentiation proof, you use first principles most of the time. Okay. Um, but yeah, if, if something like this, you can use first principles. So let's say, let's just let f of x equal x to the n. Now remember, that would mean that the derivative of f of x, according to first principles, is just going to be this limit over here. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. Um, let's go ahead and replace it with x to the n. So d over dx of x to the n, that would mean that is equal to this limit. Okay, so you just replace x plus h to the power of n minus x to the n over h. Okay, now what we have here is we've got this. And when you've got that, we can use the binomial expansion. So let's remember the binomial expansion. Okay, I'm not going to write it out like in the sigma notation. I'm going to write it just like simply. So we're going to write it like this. x to the n plus, and then next time it's going to be x to the n minus 1 times h on next part. And the constant next to it is going to be n. Okay, if you remember from like Pascal's triangle, for example, that's not Pascal's triangle. Um, this is Pascal's triangle. Okay. The point is, ignore the other terms, really, but the point is the second term is always just going to be one higher, okay? Two, three, four, five, six, okay? So that means it's always just n, okay? And the rest of the stuff, I don't know what it is, but what I can do, I can definitely say for sure the next one's going to be h squared. So what I can say for certain is that I can just factorize, factorize out h squared, Okay? So I'm going to have plus h squared times by a bunch of other things. Okay, I can say that for certain because after this, it's going to go, it's going to increase in h squared. Okay, it's going to be h, h squared, h cubed, all the way to h to the power of n. And then you remember you got minus x to the n. Okay, all over h. Now, these x to the n's cancel. And we're literally just going to be left with uh, this limit, okay, n x to the n minus 1 h plus h squared times a bunch of things, and you can probably see where this is going, okay, it's all set up very nicely, these h's cancel, it cancels out with a square over here, <clears throat> so we're left with this limit over here, n x to the n minus 1, as you can see, plus h times just a bunch of other things, okay, we don't, we're not really concerned about. Now, as h goes to zero, this also goes to zero, okay? And if that goes to zero, that means this is just going to go away, okay? You can just plug in zero, basically. So really, and this thing doesn't depend on h at all, so that means you're just left with n to the x, n minus 1. And there you go. All right, therefore, if you want... Uh, d over dx, x to the n, equals n x to the n minus 1. And there you go. Nice and easy. Just one more side note. You might be wondering why we can say n is any real number. I mean, doesn't the binomial expansion only work for um, for real? Or sorry, for integers? Or positive integers? Well, no, because the binomial expansion actually does work for any real number. Okay, any real number n and also probably complex numbers as well. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this binomial expansion here works for any, any number n. So that means we can use this fact for any number n. All right, so n is a real number. It could probably even be a complex number. It can be any number you want it to be. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.